so we start analyzing the French and the first variation we'll take a look at is the bishop d3 line. This happens after e4, e6, d4, black plays with d5, and here white plays bishop to d3. We know this is not the main line, we know white, he can play knight d2, knight c3, he can play e5, he can also take, which is this change variation, but first we'll see bishop to d3, uh, which is a subline, but I've seen this uh, being played from time to time, and it is played by strong players, I think white, white players, they want to catch black unprepared opponents, and bishop d3 is, is not as simple, I mean, it, as it looks like, I mean, we need to play precise moves as black to take uh, the initiative, or let us say, just to equalize. Remember that when we when we are playing black, fortunately for us, uh, we need to equalize first, and then we can think about uh, playing for the advantage. So after bishop d3, the move I like is taking on e4, and this makes a lot of sense because he just moved the bishop to d3. He's going to waste another tempo taking on e4. He's going to move the bishop twice, and it is important for us to, to play something like this, or maybe c5. I also like this move, since he hasn't moved a knight towards the center, so we can just try occupying the center with c5. A move I wouldn't play is knight f6, because then he can play e5. We might transpose into something else, maybe a Tarash variation, but usually white. We need to wait till his knight is on f3. And how how should I explain this? Um, we need to wait till his knight is on f3 to play knight f6. And I think the best example is that Tarash variation. If white plays knight d2, uh, well, here knight f6 is um, a main line, but usually we need to wait till white plays knight f3 because then he cannot play f4 later. Here, for instance, knight f6, e5, knight d7. He hasn't moved this knight yet, so that means he can give extra protection to his center by playing f2, f4. So here, for instance, when he plays bishop d3, he really wants to see knight f6, because then he plays e5, and then he plays f4. He hasn't played knight f3 yet, so he's given extra protection to his center. If, for instance, and this is just, I'm just uh, saying a random line, after bishop d3, if I play a6, and then he plays knight f3, now there's no f4, and that means I can play knight f6, e5, knight d7. White doesn't have the f4 idea, thus there's no extra protection for, for the e5 pawn. Uh, hopefully I, I found the way to, to explain this. The French is very complex, and I'm not saying knight f6 shouldn't be played. It depends on the situation, but you have to know that white, when he plays waiting moves, when he doesn't move this knight g1, it's because he wants to play f4 in the future. But okay, after bishop d3, we are going to take on e4, so we won't use this concept in this line. I mean, the, the, the e5, f4 concept, we won't see it, because we'll just take on e4, white takes on e4, obviously, and now I like the simple knight f6. Now we do play knight f6, we are attacking the bishop on e4, and white usually usually plays bishop to f3. There is another move, which is bishop here, but I don't think this is good at all for, for white, because um, we can just play bishop e7 or knight bd7, 
and we are usually uh, very solid as black. Now we get rid of the pin, he still has to move his bishop, and usually black after knight bd7 and c5, he frees his position very soon, I mean at an early stage in the opening, and white is still dancing with those bishops in the middle of the board, so um, I don't like this for white. This would be played by aggressive players, but then after bishop e7, well, maybe taking on f6, uh, here I can just take with the bishop, taking with the pawn is also interesting, we'll see positions like that, but here, considering I'm attacking this way, I can play a quick c5, not to mention, I also have the bishop pair. I think this is very good for us. So, yeah, bishop g5, bishop b7, bishop, maybe bishop f3. But then I can castle. And as I was saying, I can play a quick c5. Let's not forget, he moved his bishop like three times. And f3 is not the best square for white's bishop. f3 is the square for his knight. So... He's definitely doing something wrong in this position. Whereas black, he's been playing natural moves. So, yes, after this, d takes, bishop takes, knight f6. White players are going to play bishop f3. They want to keep the bishop pair. They somehow got this bishop on this diagonal. White might have some pressure on the queen side. But if we play it right, we won't have any issues. So after bishop f3, um, here I, I found two games I really like. One of them was played between Onischuk against Wan Hao. This game is from 2015. Uh, we are talking about two strong grandmasters. So we see this playing being played from the white side by strong grandmasters, and black, uh, we'll see how to deal with this uh, by <laughs> 2700, which is one how. And by the way, I think there is a game which might be even more important, played between Magnus Carson as white, so Carson played this, against Grishuk, um, and this, this game was played in 2012. And to my surprise, I didn't know this game, Black won this game, Grishuk beat Carson with the French, so that's good to know. And okay, the difference is, one how played knight bd7, and Grishuk played c5. And to be honest, I really like both moves for Black. c5, the, the, the move Grishuk played, I think it is alright, because we have some lead in development, as we know, white has been moving the bishop too much. And um, we are also trying to... Um, how to say this? Liquidate the center by playing c5. We are trying to equalize as black. So I think after c5, we are just probably equalizing. I, I, I mean, we are already there. So after c5, Carson played knight to e2. And this is the point of white's strategy, developing the knight via e2 and keeping the bishop on this diagonal. If he takes on c5, I mean, this is pointless. I can even play queen c7. And one day, once I castle, I'll play rook d8 and his queen is suffering. Or I can just take and now he can decide whether to play with the king in the center or to move the bishop one more time. And again, I think black is just better. I can even castle queenside in this one. So, yeah, d takes c5. It's not going to be played. Uh, bishop e3 might be an option, but white, when he plays moves like bishop e3, remember this concept because in the French this happens a lot. Whenever he plays bishop e3, if queen b6 is an option, then consider it because you are targeting both d4 and b2 pawns. Uh, here, knight c6, I love it too, and possibly in the future, knight d5 is going to be annoying for white. So, 
After c5, I like uh, the move Carson played, knight d2, uh, Grushuk took, and now white takes on d4 with the queen. This is Carson, his style. He wants to play an endgame, he usually outplay his opponents in this phase of the game, so uh, queen takes d4 makes a lot of sense. Uh, knight takes d4 is another option. But yeah, worst case scenario, I can play bishop c5. I mean, I can castle next. And if he moves the knight, I don't mind trading queens off. This seems uh, fairly equal. Um, and maybe another move I would consider is um, a6. Um, we have positions like this in the Tarash variation, where white plays knight d2 on move 3 e4, e6, d4, d5, knight, d2. Uh, we reach positions like this, um, and this is alright. When we play a6, the idea is to place the queen on c7, and then we stop knight b5. Um, and here, for instance, if we play a move like e5, which is, which is interesting, knight b5 might be an issue. If queen d8 leaves this square, then the knight on b5 is attacking c7, d6, so a6 same black does in Sicilian, a6 is always a good move to have because we stop knight b5 and we basically have queen side under control. So that happens if he takes with the knight, but he'll probably take with the queen. And after queen takes d4, here I was surprised by what Grishuk played, knight bd7. Uh, the engine doesn't like this move much, but to be honest, I do. Um, the engine gives knight fd7, which, I mean, I, I'm having a tough time believing this is good for black. Um, I mean, I guess that computer wants to play knight c6, but at some point this knight has to go back to, to the king side. Maybe that computer wants to play something like this, and maybe knight f d7, the only, the only position where I would play knight f d7 is here, because he's got the bishop on f3. But if we are talking about any other position, it's like, I would never play knight f d7, it doesn't make any sense for black. Um, another move I like, and this is... Maybe bishop d6, if you don't want to trade queens, bishop d6 is also playable. Uh, maybe queen c7, well queen c7, I mean, we attack this pawn, but white, he, he won't care, he'll just play bishop f4, he'll castle, and he'll try attacking our king in the center, so I think the move Grishuk played is very good, because we are not playing the end game, which by the way, it's possible to play, we can just enter the end game. it's not terrible, but if you're in a fighting mode, then knight bd7, I think it's good, and let's see how this game was. Carson played knight to c3, white, we start understanding his idea in this line, and it is fair to say he has potential on the queen side, I mean those diagonals f3b7 and f4b8, they look a bit scary, to be honest. Uh, here, Grishuk played bishop c5, queen f4. Another great move by Carson. And now I'll explain why. Um, here, Grishuk played queen e7, which, I mean, you can argue about this move, whether it, whether it is the best or not. I would just castle. But the point of queen f4 is that uh, he's inviting us to play a move like e5. And usually this is not a good move in this position. It's like the pawn on e6 is, is solid for us, and one day this diagonal is going to be an issue for us, not to mention the d5 square. So we have to be careful when we play a move like this. Grishuk played queen e7, white castled, now bishop d6, solid, queen here, knight e5, and yeah, I don't know if this 
Maybe this was not a classical game, I think we are talking about a rapid game, but still, the outcome of the opening was perfect for black, because we are about to take the bishop on f3. White is simply losing the bishop pair. Um, and, okay, Magnus didn't find anything better than bishop here. Black played h6. I think I can just take on f3. Maybe white has some compensation, but this is not good. So, okay, Grishuk played h6. Now white played bishop e4. He's not in a rush yet to move the bishop on g5 because there is a pin on the h file. But Grishuk plays the fearless kingside castle, and now white has to take on f6. There are no sacrifices, I mean, we, we take the bishop on e4 at the end, no mates, nothing. Um, so here, both moves, pawn takes bishop and knight takes e4, win. So, yeah, this move is very good. And what I like about this is that he'll lose one of, one of the two bishops, and I'm happy with that. I mean, after this, I can just play the endgame. This endgame, of course, is a much better option than the first endgame for us, because we do have the bishop pair. This pawn structure, and this is a French concept, um, it, it is very good because we'll advance, we can use the g-file to attack in the future, maybe, I mean, hopefully one day we can place a bishop on b7. Uh, this is not a weakness, and in the French we see this a lot, this pawn structure, uh, f6, e6, f7, don't underestimate uh, this pawn structure by black. It is usually very good, especially in endgames. So, this position, I mean, to be fair, I think it is equal, white. Uh, he's, he's not worse, but he's certainly not better. So, uh, black ended up winning this, this endgame, which is good news for black. I mean, it's not easy to, to win that position against Carson, but it means black has potential to improve. It says a lot about that position. And again, c5 is, is a move. You should consider that is the move Grishuk played. And knight bd7, the move one how played against Onishuk, uh, I also like it because... Uh, by not playing c5 yet, we have the option of playing c6 in the future, and then uh, we block bishop f3. It's like we'll try equalizing in another way. It's like c5 is not binding. And if you take a look at this, that position we were analyzing of Carson Grishuk, uh, maybe Carson made some mistakes here. Be but you get the feeling that if he plays precise moves, he might have a slight edge. Because now his bishop on f3 makes a lot of sense. So, knight vd7 after bishop f3, I think it's like... Well, I don't, I don't, I don't want to say it is the best move, but it, it is the most flexible move for black. And if we want to play c5, we can even transpose later by playing c5. The thing is, the knight on d7, we know it's, it's good there, and we might have the chance of playing e5 in the future. So, okay, white played knight to e2, and here black plays with e5. This is a different approach. And if we play with e5, that means we'll end up playing with c6. And then we make sure bishop f3 is not putting pressure on the queen side. It is a different structure. What we are analyzing now has nothing to do with the previous game we saw. But I like this. I mean, I think this is another good way to equalize. Maybe it is more comfortable for us because we don't allow white any queen side counterplay. So after e5 white played knight bc3. If he takes, well, then this is awesome for us. We can just take. We don't have to fear the queen's, the queen less position because uh, 
this bishop doesn't have a way out and we'll just play an endgame with the bishop pair, which is very good for us by the way. And since there are no queens on board, our king on d8 is not at risk. So this is this is very good for us. So after e5, well this move, by the way this loses on the spot because I play e4 and the bishop is trapped. But even if e4 wasn't possible, d5 is not it's not very enticing for white because that pawn on d5 is blocking the bishop on f3. And it's giving us extra squares on on the queen side. So knight b c3 looks like a better option for white. And he needs to control the e4 square. If he castles, which is always a possibility, uh, I can consider e4. That bishop is being trapped. So knight bc3, and now I like bishop d6, the move by Chinese Grandmaster Wan Hao. And in this game, white plays bishop to e3. I don't know, when I look at this position, I, I think that if I were white for some reason, I wouldn't feel comfortable with my bishop on f3. It's like, I'm always at risk. I mean, e4 is always there. And if I take on e5, then knight takes e5, and again, my bishop is at risk. So, I know black cannot attack my bishop yet, but I think it's he's too close. So that's why I would feel uncomfortable as white. Uh, and bishop e3, the move white played, is interesting. This knight takes e5, and again, we'll just play with the bishop pair, because bishop f3 has no way out. Uh, what else? Maybe bishop here. This move, I don't like it, because I can play h6, and now he has to take on f6. This probably loses. Uh, well, maybe it doesn't, but, I mean, again, he's just putting himself in a weird situation, because that bishop f3 is at risk. Um, but yeah, maybe here, white, uh, he's still on time to save the bishop with bishop d5. So, yeah, as black, if he plays bishop h4, I wouldn't play any complicated lines. I would just castle. And the engine is saying black is much, much better. The pin is pointless. Maybe in the future I can still try this. And now my next move is going to be rook e8. One day, one day I'll have the threat of g5 plus e4. Whenever he takes, we know we have this powerful retake, and again he loses the bishop pair. So, if white tries this move, and I'm showing this because this was played before, h6, bishop takes. Here, I just like knight takes f6. In another game, I found black played queen takes which is also fine, but then white gets the bishop pair back with knight e4, and we have an equal position. But we have the bishop pair, we can afford playing for a win with knight takes f6, and now if he wants to take, okay, I can just stay back. This is a dream position for black. Bishop on e5 is a giant, I can play c6, king c7, if he castles, I can play king e7, and we are just out of risk. Maybe we need to calculate a bit here, but then, I mean, we play the simple rook e8, he moves the knight wherever he wants, and then king f8, and little by little, we'll start bringing our pieces out. And again, the bishop pair gives us the advantage. So, white... In this line, um, he plays, as I was saying, bishop e3. And I wonder why he doesn't castle. What happens if he castles? Then I think we can just castle as well. And um, if he plays something, some decent move, if bishop g5, we can even try transposing to a position we saw already. But if he plays let's say a3, our plan 
rook e8 looks very good, trying to play e4. Or another idea is taking on d4 and then we play knight e5. And again, that bishop on f3 is not looking very good. So this line, now you understand why I I put knight bd7, the one how game, as the main line. Bishop d6. Okay, white played bishop to e3 in this game, black castles, and white decided to play d5. And I don't know why, but um, he doesn't want to play kingside castle. Maybe queen d2, trying to castle queenside, but as usual, our moves as black are very easy. No matter what he plays, rook e8 seems to be an option, trying to play e4, trying to force this move, and then, well, you know what happens next. We get a powerful knight on e5. So yeah, queen d2 looks a bit passive. Taking on e5, well, again, very good for us. Uh, maybe, I mean, castling kingside. And again, rook e8 looks very good. Also taking on d4 and then knight e5. I know white saves his bishops, but the problem is I can play something like this. g4 square is not under control. I have a lot of pieces there. I target h2. I also attack the bishop on e3. Yeah, this is a disaster for white, who's full of weaknesses and nothing in return. Believe it or not, this sounds like too much, but the engine says black is already winning. And that, that might be true. We attack on e3. We have this diagonal. From a positional point of view, we have uh, a huge, huge, a huge advantage. So, yeah. Now, we understand why Onishchuk played d5. Basically, he was trying to stop this in knight e5. And knight b6 was the move one how played. I like it. There's another move which I really like, which is knight to e8. Now the center is closed. We can play in king Indian fashion. I mean, f5. I bet this move is happening sooner or later. And those bishops there are not good to stop our pawns. So I really like this position for black. The move one how played is also very good. Knight c5 looks like another option as well. And black ended up winning. And in this position, okay, here it is. Knight c4. Knight c4 was an option. Black played bishop f5. But just to summarize, here black has some initiative and some advantage already. You can check the entire game because it is instructive to learn chess in general but uh, opening wise I think black got a much better position so that is the reason why I like knight bd7 and again when we play this we can still play c5 later if we want but here we can choose whether to play c5 or e5 and that is the reason why I chose knight bd7 as uh, the main move in our repertoire. So that's all for this chapter. I hope you found this useful. I hope you could learn something. And of course, I want to see you guys in my next videos. Thank you.